Roadshow, episode number 294. My name is John Morgan, and Cold Coffee is with me. The crew is all together. Hey, John. It's good to hear from you, Cold Coffee. I was a little bit worried. I don't know if people know uh, you had a surgery. This as, as if 2020 hasn't been tough enough. <laughs> you had a surgery uh, and had to have some teeth removed. I know you. I were, did, John. I, I, and all of a sudden, my voice sounds like this. I was gonna say I, I didn't know if people might notice the subtle difference, but people, <laughs> uh, y- you were a little Keep bit concerned. Keep the kids away, John. Keep the kids away. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Uh, no, hey, Chris. <laughs> I know you were a little bit worried, uh, by the way, because you 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 are missing a couple of teeth at this point. Not a couple. They they just took three okay. out, and I actually had uh, another one that was out from the last time. So, uh, for just to bring you up to date, because I've told you everybody else every other facet of my life, might as well bring you into this one as well. <laughs> um. There is a, a every once in a while um, when your penis is so large it causes a <laughs> cyst to grow on your jaw. What is all going right, no. on? Uh, all right, so I had a. Uh, <laughs> by the way, we I had knew, some telemore. I knew dude. you pregamed a little too much tonight. I knew you pregamed too that's much. A, that's tonight. how we do. No, so all right, so I had a, a cyst, uh, which. Uh, it's, it was called a cyst, but they call it a tumor now. It's a, a KCOT for all of you that are really into looking into up to like medical shit. But is it is a cyst that was uh, along my uh, jaw. I had it happen years and years ago, and uh, when we removed it, the jaw uh, the the jaw grew back and it actually changed my bite pattern. So I busted through a tooth, so I had a tooth removed, and I was Jeez. like, oh, let's just wait to get that replaced. Make sure it doesn't come back. Fast forward some years, and it did come back. And this time when it came back, it was impacting the the three teeth in front of the one that we removed. It was pushing it through, like, the fluid that it builds. Um, it, they call it an OKC or a KCOT, depending on how you do it. An OKC is a odontogenic keterocyst. And, uh, and it creates this keratin, like this white milky fluid in this sac. It can push everything off to the side, and it can erode your bone and all that sort of deal. Um when they changed it, they um, years back, the medical community said, okay, it doesn't act like a normal cyst. Let's call it a tumor. So they called it a KCOT, which is a keterocystic odontogenic tumor. Get the knowledge you just yeah, dropped. Well, in. you know, when you medical have all these knowledge. medical shit, I, I always tell my mom, I'm a WebMD doctor at this point. Um, so uh, they went in and removed, uh, hopefully got everything out of it, and they drained the fluid and stuff. But unfortunately, to get to it, the way that it had worked itself in, it was in and around the teeth and was actually pushing my teeth around. So they had to remove uh, the three teeth. So I have four missing teeth on the right side wow. of my mouth. So no solid foods right now uh, for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, but for the most part... Uh, I, I notice every once in a while, I'll notice like a little, like a, a lisp when I say something, but it, right. it's, it's not quite as bad as this, John. <laughs> so the whole thing is, yeah, you were a little worried that people oh, would notice so that uh, worried. your voice had changed slightly, so you decided to go uh, full, just ridiculous with it. Yeah, that, that's about all you can do. I, and it's funny, because I asked my da- my uh, the surgeon before I did, I was like, am I still going to be able to do karaoke? I was like, because, you know, the, the Filipino in me has to sing. It's in my blood, you know. He's like, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But I ask any of you, like, um, when you're when you're saying your words, when you say phrases, and this is what I was talking to you about earlier, your tongue bounces off your teeth it, and the way your lips form around the words. Mm-hmm. You don't realize how much of that your teeth sort of play into what you say. And if I would have lost the teeth in the front, it would have been a lot more pronounced, you know, uh, the right. way it changes your voice. Because even saying my name, even saying other things, you, you know, your tongue sort of bounces around. Where luckily right now it's all off to the side. So um, I, I still have a, a, a half shit eating grin at this point. You know, I can still sort of smile, but it's it's weird. But, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Could we have waited to 2021 so then I could start my complaining on 2021? Yes, I could have. But honestly uh, – Part of the decision was since this year, since I already had the huge surgery, uh, my deductible is met. So for the most part, 
It made sense to get it, it done. It just made sense to even address it. Even though it, it makes your year point. even worse. Yeah, it does. But honestly, in, in the, the long gra- run, it's the right play. It was it was a, it was the right play. And in terms of surgery, like this was absolutely nothing. Yes, I lost three fucking teeth, but literally the other surgery, I was worried if I was ever going to wake up or if I was going to be able to walk. So like, Bro. in the terms of this one, I was like, okay, you're telling me I might be numb in my face a little bit and lose a teeth, uh, lose some teeth. I'm like. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, I had some people, obviously, <laughs> uh, that were asking how you were doing and, and knew that you were going through a surgery but didn't know all the details. And I'm like, well, the last time we went in for surgery, I was like, we basically had a conversation that was like, we might never see each other again. <laughs> I was like, this one, he he was pretty good. I'm yeah. like, he, I was like, so I think it's fine. I'm like, last time he was a little worried that that was, that was, the, end of, that was the end of cold coffee. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think anytime they put you under, there is cause to make sure you have your shit in order. Like, and so even on this one, I, I gave uh, – Fiasco Jones was gracious enough, uh, since he's off work, <laughs> to, to give me a ride. Love you, Fiasco. Sorry uh, sorry to make you lose your job. Um, Fiasco was able to, to, to give me a ride up there, and uh, I even told him that. I was like, here's my mom's number. Here's my sister's number. Uh, should send anything go wrong? And I actually gave him my keys and everything. Uh, I was like, you know. If worst case, you need to, you know, do things. That's just one of those things, you know, as I mean, it's one thing to to feel like you are, um, you know, invincible and you're always around. But anytime you go to sleep, I mean, for the most part, they've got that shit dialed in. But, you know, you yeah, always got to be you always no got you always gotta be aware that there is always the possibility. So, uh, yeah, but this one, knowing what it, what the surgery was going to be, knowing the fact that it, it's like in and out, you know, it's a it's a outpatient sort of surgery. I was pretty confident, and we had done it before. Yeah. Granted, the last time um, we didn't have to uh, do the teeth because of the way that the the cyst or the tumor, if you will, depending on what year of the medical journal that you subscribe to, um, it didn't pronounce itself through the teeth. So, um, but yeah, whatever. You know, uh, on on top of the grand scheme of things, yeah. If anybody wants to say like 2020 sucked for them, I'm like, bro. I, I can you. go all in. I got we, we got this. We got this. <laughs> Not that it's ever a challenge, but I know other people have dealt with shit, and I, and I make light of it because it helps to make light of things and to joke about things. But yeah, 2020 has been a, a fuck shit of a year. Um, but it is what it is. It's getting better. I feel already, even just like talking now, and when you came over, and just uh, after this past weekend. I feel a lot better mentally than I did last week yeah. as well. You know, and every week's going to be good. You have your good days and your bad days. And I envision that's always going to happen for, you know, just for the foreseeable future or anything. But, um, yeah, in terms of this surgery or whatever, um, it, it was it was not a big deal. And But that could be the whiskey and the pain pills talking as well. Could be. Could be. Well, they tell you to not take whiskey and alcohol. Well, I guess they didn't say whiskey particularly, but they said no alcohol when you're taking hydrocodone. And, and yet, and some other you brought things. out the whiskey with no pushing whatsoever. Well, you just you just brought it out. It was literally like six feet away from us in the nice fridge that we invested here in the uh, the road show uh, studios. I should come up with a name with the studio. Now you can. Well, listen. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that you're doing okay. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad that you're feeling okay. Um, and, and now that I know you're okay, you know, I didn't want to take away from, from your struggles and your pain and what you were going through, but I also had an incredibly difficult day. Um, I was not able, I was not able to secure a PlayStation five. Is that a thing? Uh, Yeah. That's hard to find. PS five came out today. Obviously we're sitting down on a Thursday night, like we always do. Uh, it came out today, Thursday, November 12th. Uh, by the way, uh, happy anniversary to the UFC. Happy anniversary to uh, Conor McGregor becoming champ champ. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a big day in MMA history. But today was the day I was supposed to be we able to get a to PS5, and and I couldn't get a PS5. I couldn't wow. get a PS5. And that's, you know, that's can you a, imagine the struggles that I went through. And I'm gonna be honest. That's with only you. kid problems. Yeah, I'm gonna be that's honest. Only with kid problems. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't even I don't even play that many video games. Yeah. But I just got oh, was caught it for up you? In it. Was it for you? I, I mean, no, it was for my kid. I, I, Are you sure? Yeah. Was it for you or for him? Uh, it's for both. Of us. Uh, <laughs> I don't play. I don't play that many video games, uh, but I have had every PlayStation from from the yeah. one all the way up. So I figured, you know what? 
I'll get in on this PlayStation 5. Yeah. And look, everybody's is, ranting and raving about this shit, but I, I think did, it's just because everything that's brand new and shiny. Of course. And, and and yes, I absolutely. My kid at eight years old now is really getting into like the video game, you know, playing phases of his life. And I really did want to get him like the brand new thing. But you just got him that guitar. You can't give him. You can't give him something else. That's true. Did get him. A, did get him a guitar as well. Because if you get him the brand new shiny uh, PlayStation Five, he's he's not going to want to go wanna, in there and, uh, and, and do well, it. Well, maybe that was the world looking out for me. You but know? yeah. So while you had your struggles, I also had my struggles. I was I was I was refreshing more than I want to admit on these oh, different oh, websites. Because so you, you didn't actually leave the house to go you look can't, for it. No, you can't. They actually made a deal because of COVID. They were saying. No in-store purchases on launch. They didn't want people lining up. They did. I think it was like their social consciousness type thing. They didn't want people lining up. Uh, so you had to do online only. So I was refreshing uh, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, GameStop, and Amazon. I was just Whoa. pounding. Was refresh. it all the same price or was it like yeah, a range? all the same price? All the same price. I wonder if they do that sort of thing. I, I thought I saw on a commercial the other day that like BK or somebody Burger King. Or somebody was giving it away, like on a purchase or something. Maybe it was just a, a stupid commercial. I think it was a commercial. Maybe they were. Well, I could whatever. buy a Whopper and get a PS5. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Next thing you know, you'd be like, "Well, if that's the case, I'm gonna go buy fucking I'll some Whoppers." I'll have two Whoppers, please. I love me some Whoppers though. <laughs> yeah. Do you like so, Whoppers? Do you like Burger King? Uh, I'm not really a Burger King guy. More of a more, uh, you know. A, a Wendy's guy, probably. If I'm going, burgers. I mean, Wendy's is I mean, good. Now, Wendy's if we're going upscale, legit. if we're going upscale, if we're, if we're talking burgers right now, and, and that's a debate, I'm Shake Shack all day. Yeah, Shake, Shake Shack. Shack's not bad. I like Shake Shack. I do like the Wendy's. Uh, it's funny because we, I think we talked about the other day, like when it comes to original spicy chickens, like they Wendy's been doing that for a long time. Their burgers aren't bad. I think they gotten better, but uh, oh, Wendy's spicy chicken's on point. The spicy chicken's good, but spicy chicken's on point. I don't actually don't as much as people. You guys might be surprised. I know you don't, and I don't really either. I don't eat a lot of fast food. Every once in a while, now I've been I've been grief fast fooding, so I'll go every once in a while. I'll go to like uh, McDonald's or something when I'm just like, I don't want to go home and cook for myself. My life sucks. That's like a real thought of in my course. head. <laughs> so I'll literally do like the fast food thing, but then I get like immediate grill grief afterwards because I'm just like, or guilt. I'm like that sucked. Like fast yeah, food is really made better not food than that. really that good. Like nah. I feel like they're. Uh, with the whole, especially with the whole pandemic stuff, like people are so just like, I'm over being at my house. I want to go get something. I feel like the quality has like dropped in some of the restaurants that you went to. But I could just be crazy because I don't go to a lot of fast food places that when I finally go and I'm like, oh, this doesn't remind me of what it was, you know, 15 years ago when the last time I had it. Well, listen, I know everybody turned in for the uh, surgery, <laughs> video games, and fast food road show, uh, but let's talk a little bit of MMA. I will say, you but know, it's what we're most qualified on. <laughs> it is what we're most qualified on. Way more qualified than we are to talk about MMA, probably, for being honest about it. Uh, I will say, you know, I was a little bit worried about how we were going to address Bellator moving forward with, with them kind of shifting to Thursday as their thing. Yeah. Listen. I was when when I heard they were shifting to Thursday, I was a little bit worried that they were going to go super late at night. And I yeah. don't know, I don't know what their permanent broadcast schedule is, but I'll tell you what. Right now it's kind of perfect. Like we literally just finished watching just Bellator. Finished watching sit down, we've had a couple cocktails, a couple of frosty like 6 beverages. 6 p.m. at night. 6 p.m. on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh That's and we can cool. sit here and talk about. It. I love this new slot. I hope they're That's keeping cool. this time slot. Um, because I was afraid we were just going to have to gloss over it, but instead, we really just got to watch it. And uh, by the way, Patricio Freire, pretty good. He's pretty good. Somebody, somebody should uh, give that guy a contract. I think he's got skills. Dude, he's he's legit, <laughs> Dude, man. He he literally he starched him. He wobbled Pedro Carvalho yeah. like at the start. I'm telling you, like the first big left he landed, you could see uh, Pedro's knees kind of buckle a little bit. And it seemed like every shot he landed after that. Um, was 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 hurting him, yeah. and I think that's why. And I, I think Mike Beltran was right in the stoppage because uh, yeah, there was nothing wrong with that. Stoppage. Yeah, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like he was out cold, but I mean he had kept, he kept getting buckled and buckled yeah. and buckled and buck and then finally fell, and it's called off in the first round. And uh, yeah. man, Pitbull is he's legit, man. Pitbull, if he didn't um, stop it right at that point, Pitbull, especially the fact that it's the first round, would have just pounced on him and just would have. He would have eaten a bunch more shots. Should he have? Would he have covered up and and, and deflected some of that? Sure, but at that point, Pedro would just it would just it would be he would just smash them. Yeah. I mean, uh, Cavallo's a good. I mean, he's 
It's crazy because we were talking about the size difference when you looked at the two and they were, you know, opposite each other. And Cavallo was uh, like the much bigger sort of individual. But Pitbull, I mean, his fucking power is just crazy. It's one of those things that we sort of talked about, like, depending on what version of Pitbull showed up. You know, at some point in some age, at some point, Pitbull's going to start diminishing. I mean, he's sure. taken injuries on. He, he fights a decent a amount of fights. It's going to happen. And Cavallo's one of these cats that um, he has – he just kind of – he's like an, a, a quiet sort of storm. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't give him credit for how good he really is. But then you see a fight like this, and then I can I guarantee somebody's going to come out of the woodworks and say, oh, he was overhyped. He was whatever. I think Pitbull just put on – it was the perfect performance for perfect him. Perfect one. He clipped him early, he and then he stayed it, on And him. it was a perfect shot. So fast, too. Yes. Just, ah. and, I mean, it was just a perfect shot. And, I mean, and that's one of those fights that I think any fighter will say, you know, he just caught me with the perfect shot. You know, there's nothing you could do. If you ask Peter, what could you do better? Well, yeah, I could try to dodge that shot. But, I mean, it was just a perfectly placed shot with power, with speed. I mean, it's, it's super impressive. It's, it, there's a reason why the dude – had two has two belts or whatever. Hey, he's legit. Does he still man. have both the belts? Yes. That's crazy. He's a legit. I mean, it's legit. I mean, like that's he's a legit stud. Um, but I mean, Pedro's a good fighter, man. I mean, Pedro will bounce back. I mean, it's uh, this is just a blip on the radar for him. He'll learn a lot from it, in a sense. I mean, already he's going to learn. I need to not take that on my chin. Yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. Don't want to take it on the chin, but um. But it was fun. It was a fun. It was fun. And you're right. I mean, like, it's so, it's dark outside, but the fact that the event is over, and I feel like we still have plenty of time. And it's crazy because of the NFL with the way they're scheduling. So on one TV here, we had Bellator fights, which is awesome, and then NFL fights or NFL football off to the side. Like this is like a guy's well, dream right now and, and, with and, this craziness. And, and I really like this. And and I know that Bellator, like, maybe it hurts the ego a little bit to not be able to run on Saturday nights or whatever. But to me. I like it because now they yep. get their own little spotlight. You That's know it. what I mean? They get a night. You know, and to me, and, and, and listen, I'm one of those guys that can watch everything. And I understand some people say, oh, there's too much MMA on. But I love Contenders on Tuesday, Bellator on Thursday, yep. UFC on Saturday. You know, we've got some other things going on Saturday afternoon. We, you know, we've got uh, one championship. we got KSW. Now, granted, I we live in this thing. I get it. Some people yeah. aren't going to be able to live that way. Right. But the fact that you can kind of turn it on and watch it whenever you want, man, I I love that. Yeah. And let's let me just say, and, and we'll because we're going to get to talk about Bellator a little bit. Emmanuel Sanchez, by the way, looked fantastic against yeah. Daniel Weichel. Uh, He's a stud. Didn't you know? Didn't get the finish, but I mean, a clearly dominant decision. And I love the way these semifinals are turning out. So, uh, in case you forgot, uh, because obviously the schedule has, has changed things up a little bit, but uh, the other side of the of the semifinal bracket in that Featherweight World Grand Prix, uh, which, by the way, obviously the belt was on the line tonight. It's on the line every time, which I love that. By the way, the, win- so cool. the winner gets a million dollars as well. I mean, this is cool stuff. But the other side of that bracket – is A.J. McKee versus Darian Caldwell. And I, I have been singing the praises of A.J. McKee from the time he was like 1-0, and oh, man. This kid. Do it again. Sing me something. I mean, oh, he's amazing. <laughs> A.J. is so amazing. So <laughs> <laughs> now listen, That's man. Good. I, That's good. Now you legit sing his praises. <laughs> of A.J. McKee. Literally singing the praises. Literally singing uh, the praises. No, listen, I'm excited about him. But Darian Caldwell is going to present a real test for him. Yeah. Um, I do believe that the that the, the finals lineup will be AJ McKee versus Patricio Freire. And as you said, I mean, dude, it's hard to pick against Pitbull, man. Like he's just on this reign of terror. But at some point, he's gonna reach a point, right, where where the young gun is gonna come up and sneak up yeah. against him. And and I'm not just automatically overlooking Darren Caldwell because uh Darren Caldwell has had a, a, a nice run. He's he's beat Henry Corrales. He beat Adam Boric, who Adam Boric is another guy that is a young stud over at Bellator. There's a name that you're gonna keep your eye on. So for him to be able to get through AJ McKee, entirely possible. I'm telling you right now, this this featherweight Grand Prix, the semifinals and the finals, got my attention, man. Got yeah. my attention. I mean, I think there's a reason why Pitbull's fighting you know, you look back. He's fighting a couple times a year. I think he's already trying to be smart about how he's protecting his body. But at some point, especially with, you know, with having to defend and and try to proceed, I think at some point, you know, let's see, how old is he right now? 
33. I mean, yeah, he's, he's not old, 30s. but no. I mean, he's, yeah, he's still but in that middle. it will catch up with you middle. at some point. At some point, it will catch up, and AJ is just so fast and just – he's spectacular. But, I mean, when it comes to pure power, uh, Pitbull has the edge, I think, in power. I think right now AJ has that speed. He has that creativity. I mean, you I think, know what I you're going to get. I think on the ground, they'll be – like when they get into the grappling department, I think that'll be fun. That's, that's when it can be, be – I think it can be very, very exciting. It can be a lot of fun. But I don't know who – I think I'd want to see how they look fight week before I decide on that particular one. Because I would – it should it should it be that way. Sure. Um, because, yeah, I mean, Pipple, man, he's so tough to pick against. But Asia, there's something so uh, – it's just fun watching. I love watching um, even his interviews and his fight weeks. The the relationship that how cool was that? We actually got to watch an event where he fought and his father fought That's at crazy. the same event. I thought that was just so unique and so crazy. cool. I mean, so he's grown up around fighting and around guys that fight. I mean, so when it comes to people that say that you know they've lived and breathed this their whole life, I mean that is AJ for sure. Um, but he's just a fun guy to chat with. He's a fun guy to uh, talk. He, he's energetic you know he'd be great for the sport to be a champion but pitbull's been a great champion as well um but yeah i mean wow that that would be a fun one uh to see for sure but bellator i mean that was a fun event it's a good event man and aaron i will pico, say how about aaron pico? aaron pico he he showed every bit of what everybody has been saying i mean he's had glimpses where he shows all the hype that everybody's been talking about. There's been setbacks in the past, and then people were like, oh, it was all just hype. It was all just hype. And then you watch something like he what had today. He unreal, unrealistic expectations placed yeah. on. That, that, I, and, and no disrespect because it was, it was, it was my, my buddy Brett Okamoto, I believe, that wrote the article who we, we've been good friends with for a long yeah. time. But, man, and, and I'm sure he's not even one that wrote the headline. Uh, normally somebody else writes the headline. That's the way it works in, in, yeah. the, in, the, in, the, in the journalistic space. But – Man, when you throw out there, you know, the greatest prospect in the history of mixed martial arts, like, yeah. come on, man. Like, nobody can live up to – nobody yeah. can live up to that. That's, that's, a, that's a tough one. But, I mean, the kid is – what he showed tonight, I mean, he showed a lot of power. When you look at him, this is another guy – He's kind of got uh, – until you see him sized up against guys in his division, when you just see him outside of his uh, – you know, outside of a fight, you're like, okay – he looks fit, you know, you don't really think he's all, you know, he doesn't look like he could have too much power. And then when you see him in a fight, and you're like, okay, he's got some size. And then when you see, like, his precision and his power, and he was able to land, I think it was the right hook or something that his landed on the chip. His ridiculous, dude. His fucking his power speed is and power crazy. is ridiculous. And then immediately hopped on the guy, and that was another one where I could see where somebody was like, oh, you know, that was a good stoppage, too. He, he saved him from eating some more punches. Kudos to his opponent for uh, not going just straight out after that shot, but... I mean, Bellator, I mean, as much as people like to still harp on him, and of course, out of out of the two, UFC and the, and the Bellator, and no offense to Bellator, I mean, they are still the number two when it comes to that, but they put some of these events on that are just really, really fun to watch. And they've been pulling some people out of the woodworks that are just fun, but I had a, I had a good time watching it. I, I did too, and we've always praised them for, you know, talent identification, and that's what they've been yes. really good at. But – What's cool right now is so so they're good at talent identification, but they've always been a little bit beholden to we need local ticket sellers, right? So yeah. while they are a national promotion, yeah. they very much have to operate like a regional promotion because they're not the UFC. The UFC sells tickets just because the UFC. Bellator, right. they they have to go out and really market, right? So they use these you know local. Yeah, ticket nobody sellers. says do you train Bellator. That's right. They use these <laughs> local ticket seller type people to fill the building. Well, now. They don't need that because there yeah. is no tickets to be sold. There's no, right. so now their 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 fights are literally just their talent. Now yeah. yes, they're bringing in some people that like, and that's the other thing we've always said about Bellator. In Bellator, they will favorable match make you a little bit. They'll slow roll you a little, but that's because they're in the talent development right. business, right? In the UFC, you don't have that. Everybody on the roster is trying to be at the top. Bellator can bring in somebody on a one fight deal or whatever and right. say, hey, you know, you're kind of just the guy. No disrespect, you right. know what I mean? You're the guy. You're you're the opponent that's there to lose, um, but I think these cards right now during this pandemic era are good because yeah. I think they're benefiting from it. And I think they're really trying to make a point, especially coming on the CBS Sports Network. And you kind of opened my eyes tonight because I was complaining how I didn't have CBS Sports Network. I couldn't get it on my Roku. Right. I couldn't get it on whatever because you need to have a TV provider, and I don't have a TV provider. But I didn't realize that they were still pushing to the zone, so you could still watch the Bellator fights. 
on DAZN. So if you are like me and are clueless to the fact that uh, the the Bellator fights can still be watched outside of CBS Sports yeah. Network, we were able to watch it on DAZN, and I didn't one. realize it's that. That was mention- my own bad. No, you know what? It's worth mentioning because they're not really um, they're not really pushing it right now, and I don't know if that's. Because they're, you know, the, because of where the like zone is, I, I don't know if there's some tension. And I, I think don't, I don't that know. could be it. Because you're right, I haven't heard shit of them talking yeah. about the zone and say, hey, by the way, this is still valid. You can get it from the zone, and maybe this portion will go away at some point, right. which is what the problem. But they, it's all in. Like they've been CBS Sports Network. Go to CBS Sports Network, you know. And I'm sure that's something. But so I forgot that this was even an option. So last, the last event or so. I'm bitching and griping to myself, like, damn, I can't watch this fight. And then you come over and you're like, oh, we'll put it on the zone. zone. I was like, is that a thing? And so, you know, whatever. So if you are like me, you can still watch them on the zone, but it's worth it. I mean, because right now, for a while, the zone, without getting some of the boxing, I mean, it still leans well, boxing hurt, bro, heavy. They were, during they COVID, were they were hurt really, bad. really bad. So I'm, I'm sure they're happy that they're still getting this, this Bellator content and stuff, but. I really appreciate some of these Bellator uh, cards just because, like you said, and I'm not even the biggest, like, fanatic. Like, I guarantee most of you that are listening to this are much more fanatic on watching everything that's out there than I am. I just happen to work and live in this space. Right. But I was appreciative of this fight because this was good fights. It's not like Bellator was just like, hey, guys, here's an event. Let's just watch whatever. I mean, it's relevant fighters, and especially – I love these Grand Prix. I do, I think the Grand Prix – are just a spot above so much other crap that we've seen out of there. Just everything makes sense. It makes an event, whereas we see some of these UFC events, they used to say, okay, well, we're going to put on a fight night, and if they eventually win a main event of a fight card, you know, maybe we'll start moving them over to the pay-per-view. And it was always about sort of ratcheting them up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit by the events. When you see uh, this, this Grand Prix, you know where it's going at the end. You know that there's a title at the end. You know, if you just get through the tournament, you know, there's a set amount of money and there's something built in excitement. Whereas the UFC, it's like you never you can never sort of tell what's building because some guy can play a hot hand. And all of a sudden, Dana's like, at this guy that I said was going to get the fight, this guy's getting the fight. So that's exactly where I want to go with this, because you're exactly right on this. And, and, And it is okay. I guess it's two different things. Like on the one hand, it's fun to discuss hypotheticals and possibilities and what's out there and what should happen sure. and what fight comes next. I mean, right, uh, every week we do a, a column on MMA Junkie, right, where Mike Bond does Sean Shelby shoes or whatever, like, hey, here's what should come next. Here's what right. could come next. And it's fun. I mean, that is fun discussion, right? right? But – there's something nice about knowing, like, we literally just said, okay, we know what the next fight is, and we right. know what the fight is on the other side of the bracket, and we know what could come next, because here's what I want to get to. So, you and I uh, were supposed to work together last week. Obviously, I, I had some kind of last-minute issues pop up, um, and, and I had to duck out on fight night, uh, so we didn't get to really chat that night. Um, but Glover Teixeira looked phenomenal, yeah. right? I mean, looked absolutely fantastic. <laughs> looked I mean, the old man just keeps... Uh, All the old men look at that. Uh, Arlovsky, Arlovsky brought I know, it. Bro. I know you had a tear in the corner uh, here. Bro, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was bummed I wasn't there to, to talk to him <laughs> afterwards. I, I even said that in the uh, and a half over at uh, patreon.com slash MMA Roadshow. Because I saw how you only included uh, Oscar's audio on that one. Was my was my parts not that good? No, no, no. No, I was just trying folks, to keep folks, it short. Folks, he was hating. He was hating keep on it me. Short. He only went hot tea on the. On I was the trying to keep stuff. it short. I was trying to keep it short. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I, in fact, with our last guy, I did include you because no, you had I don't think beer you did. comments. Oh, did I, did I edit no, it wrong? No, no, you didn't. I don't think so. I may have edited it wrong, but I meant yeah. to include the part where yeah, you commented no. his beard. I thought no, that was no, fantastic. I, don't think did. Uh, I loved his beard. I thought his beard looked fantastic. You gave him beard comments. That was amazing. I did. As a fellow beard. Owner, when you see somebody that beard, I wonder. <laughs> when you see somebody else that's I've, rocking it so much better than yours, oh, he has a fantastic. Oh, beard. his beard is fantastic. But he said he was going to shave, and I was like, oh, shame. Just, I could see the pain. I could, I, feel, I feel the pain. I in felt your voice. it. I felt it. All right, so Glover Teixeira <laughs> looked fantastic, right? I think there's no denying that he's the number one contender in the UFC's light heavyweight division. Um, but I'm still all right. Here's where I stand. Here's where I stand. We, we, it was announced that Israel Adesanya is moving up and he's going to go challenge for the light heavyweight title. Yep. I had no problem with that because I, I see what we're doing here, right? First of all, I am blown away by Adesanya's greatness, right? I am blown away by where he continues to rise. Like this dude, I mean, his star quality is there. His fight style is there. Everything is there. So I don't have a problem with that. Like I want to see him go for that champ champ status and I want to see him try to set up that fight with John Jones because I want to see it, right? Yeah. So I'm okay with that. 
I'm, I'm totally okay with that. The other side of me also is saying, okay, look, if I'm the UFC or even if I'm an MMA junkie and I'm worried about my web traffic, no disrespect, but Glover Teixeira and Jan Blachowicz is not going to do good numbers. It no. just won't. And I know every hardcore MMA fan out there is going, hey, man, Glover's number one. I see people doing polls online and, oh, yeah. everybody yeah. says Glover. Cool. What about when it comes time to get your 60 bucks? Then right. what happens? You know what I mean? What's our web traffic going to look like on, on Blahovich versus Teixeira versus Blahovich versus Adesanya? Because I can tell you they're not even in the same ballpark, right? So in, in my heart, I'm saying, you know what? I get it. I understand it. Let's go with Adesanya. And, but but what I say That's is. That's because you're a UFC dually, right? To, oh, totally, totally. Toady. What's the word? Toady? UFC Shill? Shill? Yeah, that's it. But here's where we go. You're a shill, John. <laughs> here's what I say is that is that Glover Glover is the clear number one. So if they're going to do that yes. fight, he should be the backup. I think he should be the backup. I think he should be there and he should be ready. Here's the other thing is I think he should get the winner. If he doesn't get implemented, he should get the winner. Sure. But here's here's what does scare me a little bit. He is an older guy, right? right. Like he is getting up there a little bit. And if Adesanya beats Blahovic, Adesanya Jones has got to be next. It's got to be. Well, that, see, that's the part that just, just like every other time we see it, when these these fun, entertaining fights, literally, then you have two divisions that are just sort of sitting there waiting for these spectacular things to sort of happen. I mean, like one, the middleweight division at that point is just on hold for oh, yeah, it's, yeah, for it's X amount and. Yep. Heaven forbid if he actually takes an injury in the fight fighting bigger guys at another division. Very possible. Um, you're right. When it comes to whether I would want to shell up money to see Izzy fight Jan or, uh, you know, Glover fight Jan, this is the same age-old division or age-old argument. It's like, yes, of course you want to always see the division move forward. You always want to see whatever, but... Yes, I would rather see Izzy of fight course, just because there's that right? there's that if factor, you right. know, you know, like you never know. Um, but man, it's just if then at that point you know it's a guaranteed bones fight because if if Izzy has the title and Jones like okay I'm coming back for it now, you know, then it's just like and then say say it happens and say the fight's great and it's like super good and then they're like that was so good Izzy I'm sorry you lost we're gonna give you another immediate rematch. <laughs> We're going to let you go right back at it. And then it's like, okay, well, cool. Well, give me six months to heal up, and then we'll fight for it. And then next thing you know, they're like, well, we're going to let you keep going. For By the way, we're going to do an interim belt in the middleweight division. So once you're done fighting Jones, then we can let you come back and do an, a, a unification, whereas the belt sits for like a year and a half at that point. And then it just gets murky quick. and it just gets whatever. And then at that point, it's like <sighs> – I get it why they're doing it because it's for these belts. But, I mean, it would just be – I just wish it's like you want to have these fights happen, but leave the be belts out of it at some point, you know, just to make the fights happen. But I know they would never actually do that because what's the point of, of Izzy going up and fighting somebody if it's not for a belt? Like if it wasn't – like Izzy, I think, would want to fight Jones and Jones would want to fight him, but neither one of them is going to want to do it without a belt on I, the line. I guess here's the interesting part of it that I haven't really thought about much till now is that – Let's be honest, and I mean no disrespect to Jan Blachowicz, right? But the idea of you you, yeah, you can't disrespect that Polish power. You can't. It's the legendary Polish legendary power. Legendary Polish power. They sing songs of it legendary in that country. Legendary Polish power. Except in Polish. Oh, that was the that was the Google Translate version of what they say in Polish. <laughs> But my translator is broke on my phone right now, or I would play what they he just sang, but in Polish. So here's the deal: is that I don't want to disrespect the legendary Polish power, but the idea of, of Israel Adesanya moving up to capture the light heavyweight title, I guess it doesn't really matter if it's Jan Blachowicz or Glover Teixeira, right? Like, no, no disrespect to Jan Blachowicz, but now had Jan beat John Jones, now yes. we're talking about something a little bit different. Now we're That's talking about, it. Izzy but it doesn't happen. Izzy doesn't seem to care who it is. There's no beef. Well, no, and, and his legacy it doesn't mean anything. Like, yeah. it doesn't mean he any more for his belt. legacy to beat either one of those guys. Yes, he just wants the belt. So maybe you could do, but and look, hey. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and I apologize. I, you, you would expect, you know, a, a qualified podcast host like myself to come with some actual points developed. I'm actually literally just thinking about them in my head as we speak. But I've been totally okay with with, with Adesanya Blahovich. But now that I think about it, 
All right, now we know that Adesanya is trapped here in the United States right now, right? Which I I, I didn't even know that until this week. And in, in fact, if I you didn't, didn't know, he was here right now, yeah, yeah, if you didn't know, uh, I know you've had a couple other things going on in your life. Uh, <laughs> if you didn't know, Oscar Willis actually uh, filled me in this week. I guess because of uh, the COVID lockdowns in New Zealand, he oh, can't get that's back because right, he came over here for a contender series. So he's still stuck. Him and his whole team are still stuck oh, here. That's so right. that might be pushing things back a little bit. That might be pushing back his schedule a little bit and. Look, if, if we're about to go back into lockdown, you know, who knows? Maybe the things are changing. Actually, you know what? I've completely changed my mind as we sit here because, you know what? I wanted to see Adesanya fight for the 205 title, but now I think maybe the time doesn't work for him, and here's the deal. Ultimately, you just want Jones and not Asanya. I want Jones and you not want Asanya. Jones and Asanya. That's what and I you want. you realize that the title is what is needed the for that The title, you're damn right about it. That's what's needed. He's not right. going to be able to entice Jones to come back. But I think if Jones will not fight him without the title. But if the you're title's right. on the line, and he's got the belt, and he's so good at trash talking. He's so good at just poking the knee. And Who, dude, is he? Oh, yeah. He's got he'll, really just, good. he'll just sit Minus there. The, he'll the, tweet the towers you. thing, the oh, I was gonna say he'll tweet you nonstop for like twenty four hours yeah. a day for like two weeks. Why? Like yeah. he'll just, dude, he'll just keep poking the bear, poking the he'll bear. He'll have three different hair colors in the meantime. Oh yeah, yeah totally. I, he'll, t- <laughs> maybe he'll do it, but he'll he'll just keep going. You're so right. so yeah, but you know what I realize is that him becoming a two hundred five pound champion, whether he beats Yawn or whether he beats Glover, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So you know what? I have flipped. I, literally at this moment, I have flipped. I want Glover to go first. I want Glover to go first. Glover deserves to go first. For the, I mean, the thing is with Izzy, and I think what Izzy, once he realizes that Izzy can command that, now that he knows Dana will give him that fight at any point, it seems, at this point, right. if he's willing to do it now with Jan as the champ, if Glover's able to get it, he'll give it to him as Glover. Because it's not about Jan and Izzy. It's about Izzy wanting a second belt to entice Jones yep. to come down. It doesn't matter who has it. So if you want to be able to give, uh, I guess, more legitimacy to the fact of who's actually holding the belt, let Jan defend it against uh, an actual light heavy. Mm-hmm. You know, give it against the guy that possibly, I mean, who doesn't love Glover? But this is also, Glover's nearing the end as well. So let him get his picture-perfect yeah, possible it. ending if he doesn't get it, Glover's probably going to retire. Um, or he'll say, whatever, you know, but I just don't envision him saying, you know, I'm going to stick around forever and ever. But uh, forever, ever. Forever, ever. Forever. I mean, because honestly, if if there's enough shit talking, I can see where Jones and it, Jones and Izzy can fight at any particular point. But of course, the UFC is like, well, if we can get it for a title, you're going to make more money. And you, sir, are going to make more money as opposed to if it's just a regular pay-per-view you know or just a regular whatever um but you know there's always that point where we just want there's always something inside that says let's keep the division going i understand this is a sport of entertainment this is a sport of whatever but for all those poor saps that think that there's actually some legitimacy to i'm the number one <laughs> guy i'm the number two guy i should get to fight for the title and glover glover being glover didn't raise one bit of a stink. And that was the one thing. I, I let most of the other guys, and actually Steve-O, I let Steve-O take uh, what would have been my questions where uh, it went to Kevin and then Oscar. And then normally it would have been my part at that point. But I looked over at Steve-O, you know, and he was kind of waiting for me to go, and I gave him the little nod. I was like, go ahead, son. Look at you. Go ahead. Looking at Steve-O. Well, at that point, you know, I had, I, it's funny because I had j- bugged and joked with Oscar the whole night. I was like, I'm not asking questions on this next fighter. I'm not asking questions. And, of course, I would still ask questions. But then once everybody got back, I was like, Oscar, I'm really not going to ask people on this one. I was like, I'm going to let people go. And Steve was like, he wanted to see Dana when Dana wasn't there. I was like, well, Glover's coming back. He's like, oh, okay, well, that's awesome. I have uh, some Glover. Except he's more sound like, oh, that's okay. I, I, I want to talk to Glover. His voice has gotten really weird over the it's years. It's gotten raspier and raspier. Yeah, raspy and raspier. But I looked over at him, gave him an eye. I was like, go ahead, son. You know, and Because uh, he wants to do this more often. So he might actually said that he might come to do more events really? or whatever. Yeah, which is cool. He said he, he's like, yeah, no, I rented an RV and, and came or whatever. But they still put him up, I think, at the fucking Red Rock or something. Like, what's the point of getting uh, renting an RV just to come? to stay at the hotel but whatever but i thought that was pretty cool i mean uh, that he came out so i let him do the glover thing but i mean glover's like one of these cats that how can you not love him and when you brought up the point the other day i almost brought it up in the post fight because i wanted to ask him about that if he remembered you know years and years ago when he was still really grinding and pushing towards it that he 
still gave back to his community, if that still mm-hmm. meant as much at this point, you know, to push it. But then at that point, I was just – I, I kind of knew what his answer would be, you know, going into it. But I was like, ah, I'm not going to interrupt a press conference just to ask a sappy little whatever. So I kind of yeah, – Get that emotional moment. Didn't say, yeah, you know, but – Well, here, here's here's what's, here's what I'm now thinking and, and what I want to see now. And I've complete, I, I literally have completely gone 180 since, sun, since Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's Tullamore Dew, folks. I want to see the, the whiskey's flowing, baby. Get that creativity going. You know what I want to see now? I want to see uh, Fight Island because you know we're going back to Fight Island. They keep talking about March as I'm a targeted date. R- right. Well, I know. I'm, I'm assuming I'm going back to Fight Island. The <laughs> UFC is going back to Fight Island. I'm assuming that means I'm going back to Fight Island. Um, I want to see a pay per view, two belts on the line. Okay. Main event is Adesanya Whitaker, the rematch. Co-main event is is Jan and Glover, and I know they usually that put the, would be awesome. I know they usually put the heavier weight class over the lighter, but they can, they have they're the bigger names. They can do whatever they want. The more yes, can you imagine two belts on the line? Because yeah. I'm telling you right now, for the while they did that for the longest time. Like every pay per view was yeah. like was oh, two belts. They want to do two belts. That, but they can like what you're describing in my mind is the picture perfect scenario, like mm-hmm. of two fights that everybody wants to see, and it's two legitimate. This means something. It's like fights. a Grand Prix. <laughs> it's almost like a Grand Prix. <laughs> it's true. But it, but it's but it's like fights that actually are legit to the division yep. as well. Like it's not just like hey, you know. I mean, I think we all love when some of these fights come out of nowhere and they're just spectacular, just whatever clusterfucks in the sense of like Never this guy from this, this division. Is amazing. Wow, yeah. this is so amazing. We love it and we eat it up. But what's cool about that is I mean, who wouldn't want to see the rematch of Izzy and Whitaker and then let alone let the, the, the real light heavies fight for the belt. And then all that other like fantasy matchmaking shit, it's still around. It could still happen mm-hmm. because Izzy's still young and, and let's be honest, it's not about Jan. It's not about Glover. It's about the belt. Yep. It doesn't matter who's on the right. the end of it. But if you, in that chance, if one of, of those Izzy guys had to, beat Jones, it would change. But they didn't. Right. So it doesn't matter. It's it just doesn't the belt. matter at all. And 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 you know that Jones, regardless, is hovering off to the side, waiting for it to happen, waiting for it to happen. And listen, a little delay. I don't know what does that do to Jones at heavyweight. I don't know. It's great, but I, that's where I want to go for now. I don't want to think too far in the future. That's yeah. where I want to go for now. All right, that would be an awesome fight. I would be all in, and that would be legit. Probably one of the better cards we'd seen in a while. Because you know they then they would just stack. It. They would stack the undercard. I mean, well, it'd be a lot of international, probably a lot of Russians on the card. Oh, yeah. But there have been some awesome Russians coming out of the woodworks on some of these cards. These studs. I can't think. of I mean, there were a couple like some of the middle uh, fight night. Or Abu Dhabi cards that were like okay, they were okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I can imagine for that particular one, that is what we've been used to the states for a while. There, the pre-pandemic, those two fight title uh, UFC cards where they're just all the way down to like maybe the very first fight was like a guy that someone was like that wasn't a household name. Mm-hmm. Like those cards are awesome, and I feel like now it's like what have we been getting? I mean, like we're still getting decent cards, but yeah. Some of those cards are the ones that I think when people used to go to concerts back in the day and they would write the set list, I think there'd be there's probably some people that can say, oh, uh, remember that fight? We, I went to the fight that, look at this list. Boom, 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 boom. These ones that literally they could put in their notebook, their yeah, scrapbook yeah. somewhere and say, I was there for the night that so-and-so fought on the undercard of the two title, blah, 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 blah. And Man, you just made me reminisce of going to shows and like getting the set list off the Dude, stage. Dude, that's stuff. the shit. That, I used to, I mean, I used to like that try was, to get the set that's list. That's it. You know? yeah, I mean, like bro. that shit was like. I mean, it's funny because I mean, I don't know if kids still do that. Do people still do that? Like that was huge for that us. Was big man. Back in the day, going and and if you get anything from the stage or anything from the souvenir, but let alone getting a set list, was huge. But I mean, like I I was a deadhead growing up right. as well, so. Even outside of my music playing days, like being able, you know, you went a night every night. The set list was different, but that set that set list lived on, and people talked about it for years and years later. And you wonder if the same stuff right now, people haven't really grasped that. I'm sure there's maybe a small niche of people have grasped upon 
keeping track of really of like the 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 overall card and rating it upon upon other nights. And oh, stuff. no, it's fun to go back and look at old cards that you were at. So like, look who cool. was on the prelims. Look who was there. You know, I was. USC 100, John Jones was on the right. prelims. You know, John Jones was on the prelims. His debut at 80, USC 87, you know, right. you know, stuff like that. You know, I guess it's a little different, especially because the UFCs, there's so many events. It's not like, say, if it's Dave Matthews Band tr- touring and they're playing once uh, a night or and then they're playing maybe, maybe three days a week yeah. or four days a week. So you're getting roughly, you know, whatever, maybe 150 shows right. or something, whereas the UFC seems to – when you come to the different fights that go through, it gets crazy. But, but whatever. All I'm right, just, let me get your take on one other. Now one. I'm just thinking about music and other. I know. Shit. I didn't want to let you go too far down that road because I know we'll just start talking. <laughs> we're about gonna music start the smoking weed and we're just gonna be done with it at this point. <laughs> like man, it was the <laughs> first ever five hour <laughs> MMA road where was, show. It was where amazing. did I put my old bong at? It's somewhere around here. <laughs> what did I do with all my old bongs? All right, let's talk about <laughs> one other one that I want to ask you about because I've done a couple of other uh, like shows and podcasts through through the past week, and everybody keeps talking about Habib. Everybody and understandably, we still want to figure out what's going on with Habib, right? And uh, Ali Abdelaziz came out this week and he tweeted, 30 no. Obviously, Uh-oh. seems seems like a little bit of an, you know, an ominous little uh, preview of what's to come, right? And, we are, of course, we heard Dana White come out and say, ah, well, maybe Habib's going to So after Habib, uh, you know, beat Justin Gaethje and said he was retiring, I, I'll be honest, I was very much of the mindset that, you know what? This might stick. This yeah. might stick. Now I'm kind of accepting, like, yeah, it's probably not going to stick. Like, he's probably going to fight but again. But didn't he promise his dad? Wasn't 30, you know, part of the dream of his dad? That's right. That was part of the dad, but he promised his mom that he was, you know, that, you know. Yeah, but 29. nobody talks about how his mom shaped the whole shape of I agree. mixed and, martial and, and, arts and I think over there. Could, I, think I think dad trumps mom in that sense. And, well, no listen, offense to mom. Yeah, but. yeah, and that's not a dad trumps mom overall. You're just saying yeah. in, in this particular relationship. And listen, here's the thing is I know he doesn't need money. Like, he's, he's made a lot of money, but yeah. – you know, if you think about the type of money he can generate from fighting again, and then you think about what he could do, like in Dagestan, or what he could, you know what I mean, like what he could do to invest that back into his community yeah. or invest that back He's into. He's gonna it. be a government official. At some I point. completely agree with you. He absolutely He's will. Definitely gonna be a. Government all right, official. but here's here. So here, so everybody keeps talking and, and asking and trying to figure it out. And obviously, we're all playing guesswork. So I, I, I do. I don't want to pretend like we know because right now nobody's talking about what it is. But is there a fight that makes the most sense to you? Because I do feel like there has to be some motivation for Habib as well. I, I don't think he really wants to fight. Um, I do believe you're going to have to entice him with something. You're going to have to give him something that fires him up a little bit, and it's not the paycheck. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's Conor McGregor. If Conor McGregor, and I know that's the fight that everybody wants to see, and I yeah. know that's the fight that Dana White wants to put together, understandably so, because it's the it, easiest to sell. Oh my God, it would be it a sells itself. global phenomenon, man. The numbers of that would be off the charts. But I don't think Habib cares. I don't. If you go, bro, man, we're going to be able to make so much money. I don't think he wants to do it. And to be honest with you, I would almost be disappointed in Habib if Habib came back to fight Conor. I mean, he's gone out of his way to say, I'm not interested. I don't care. I, I mean, he can do whatever he wants. He can make whatever money he I don't wants. know if I'd be disappointed because I know that it would be it would be literally the biggest paycheck. And outside of fighting somebody outside of, like, MMA. Doing a Mayweather fight, one, basically. Yes, exactly. It'd be the, it would be the biggest payday in the history of mixed martial arts. Yeah. No it, question. I mean, it, it, would be, it would be huge. So I don't, I don't have any beef in that, especially knowing that uh, in his mind – and and even in our mind, I mean, I think he would take that fight. I wouldn't say easily, but I believe he would win that fight. But in his mind, he's got to think that. Yeah, I mean, that's. It. I'm not intrigued by that fight because I feel like I know exactly how it goes. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where Connor's at and uh, what sort of changes he has done. But uh, yeah, I don't see where the outcome of that fight would be any any different. Um, so but, what do you what do you what do you think would get Habib? Or what's the best? I mean, I, I don't even know the right way to phrase the it question. It would have to be. It would have to be a goat fight, or it would, I don't even know if it'd even be in his division at this point. At this point, I think he just wants a mixed martial arts fight. So I don't even anticipate it would be uh, within his division. GSP is the fight that excites me the most. Yeah, no question. That excites me the most. Yeah, but I don't know where GSP's head is at. I really yeah. don't. Um, I'll be honest with you. I kind of like the idea of doing Tony Ferguson, even though Ferguson's yeah. coming off a loss. Like that was the fight. Well, that I mean, was that's a fight that happen, was supposed to happen right? multiple, multiple times, and that was, I think, if there is a, a question mark of 
legitimate fights that everybody was like, oh, man. Well, if he would have fought him in his prime, just that's like when. That's the one we missed. That's the one we missed. I mean, so, yeah, I would love to. I, I think of all the fights that I would want to see, that's the one I would want to see. Because if, if it's Tony at 100% and, and Habib at 100%, of course. Um, but I would also be more than happy to watch GSP and him fight. And I wouldn't mind watching him fighting Connor again just to see. I know how that Connor one. In my mind, uh, no offense to Connor, no offense to his fans, just the way that the styles play out. In my mind, I know, I feel like I know how that fight would, but would it, play but out. But it would be a spectacle. It would, it would be, be awesome. It would be GSP big. and Habib. I'm not quite sure. I agree how that plays out. Tony and and Habib. My mind, I would be leaning towards Habib, but there's still the, there's still questions because uh-huh. we haven't seen the fight happen. So I'm more intrigued out of those two as opposed to just seeing. Him and Connor go out again, even though I would thoroughly enjoy watching him and Connor fight again. So it's all, let's say those three guys all say we're in. Rank them. What's what's your preference? Uh, whew. this might sound weird. Uh, I would probably go GSP, Tony, and uh, Connor number three. Connor. I'm right there with you. I'm the exact same way. And to me, and I'm just being honest now. That's partially because I want to see GSP is such a freak of nature, and what he does, oh. it's just uh. He amazes me when he goes away and then comes back and performs just magic at what he does. When he came back and did it in middleweight and other stuff. So that's the one I would see because, one, I think that uh, for even Habib, I think Habib would uh, be more proud of that win. Yeah. So I almost think he would put more Dude, that's effort goat versus into it. goat. That's goat right. versus goat. Right. That's goat versus goat. That's goat versus goat. Ferguson is the fight that we missed that we always right. wanted to see. Even if Ferguson is coming off a loss, I don't care. I right. still want to see it. It's still a matchup I want yep. to see. Connor, at that point, I mean, it does. It's again, it's the biggest fight in MMA history in terms of financial yeah. revenue. They'll make huge amount of money, F- and I have no problem with them both doing that because yeah. Yeah. good, good on them. Good, good on, on them. them to go make all yeah. the money they can. And if that's going to be your walk away fight at thirty and zero, fuck yeah, it'd be dude. amazing. Like, but there's. Is there anything outside of those three? See, here's what I'm trying to figure out. What's the wild card? Because those are the ones that, to me, are clear and obvious. And, I mean, no disrespect to anybody, but, like, you know, we got Paul Felder and Rafael Dos Santos fighting this weekend. You know, the winner of that, I mean, That's saying, yeah, I, I mean, love me some Dan Hooker. If you listen to this show, you know I love me some Dan yeah. Hooker. Love me some Dan Hooker. Does that get Habib to come out for thirty and zero? Like I don't, I right. don't think so. Like I feel like it's got to be, there's got to be something more attached to it. You know, Charles Oliveira. Yeah. Charles Oliveira is a monster right now. Does Habib want to fight Charles Oliveira? That's the thing. Like I think it needs to be this at this point. If he does come back, it's a legacy fight. It's a legacy fight. So it has to be something that he's gonna. He's he wants to hang that skin on his wall and he wants to walk away, and that can only be. A legacy fight, like it can't just be, uh, hey, this is the number one guy in the division. This is the the whatever. It has to be somebody that is uh, something that he can walk away and say, nobody will ever question why I didn't fight this guy or this was the guy. I mean, with Tony, people will always say, you know, oh, if you don't fight Tony, they'll be like, oh, well, that's a fight that should happen that we never got to see. Right. But if it was a possibility of him fighting GSP and him fighting Tony, I think people get over it really quick. That he didn't fight Tony if he fights GSP, just for the fact of one, G- people are still clamoring to see GSP. GSP is still a capable fighter, and he has so much love. And he's just at this point. I mean, he's he's a a legit legend in the sport and what he's able to do. I would just rather, I would want to see what he is capable because I every time he comes out and pulls something out. I'm just so amazed at what he is able to, to do Yeah. that I'm just like, man, can you believe some people forgot how good this dude is? Here's here's what's interesting, too. Here, here's the other thing I've been thinking about this week, right, on the other side of it. Could Habib end up being the next GSP? And what I mean by that is could he say, I'm out right now? Like all those, hey, yeah. I appreciate those three fights. Um they don't really work for me right now. Although I know if GSP was in, he'd definitely take it. I know that for a yeah. 100% he would take that fight. But for whatever reason, if GSP doesn't want to do it, it doesn't work out. Could Habib walk away and be the guy that comes back in four years, five years? Because I'm telling you right now, like we all know Habib's lifestyle. He's going to be wrestling. He's going to be training. He's not going to be sitting on the couch drinking. You know what I mean? That's obviously right. not part of his 
of, of, of who he is. That's not part of his beliefs and his and his, his moral structure. Could maybe would there be some value in that? In that, like he comes back four years from now against whoever it may be. Maybe it is Hooker. Maybe it is Oliveira. Maybe it is somebody else that's been on this dominant run, right. you know, in the lightweight division, and now he becomes. The, the legend GSP. killer. That's right, coming back. <laughs> you know, we're talking about him versus GSP is goat versus goat. Maybe he yeah. comes back to address the new goat or something. Like, I wonder if that's even possible. It's quite possible. I, I honestly think uh, he is going to take over uh, the role and fill the absence that his father left, the vacuum of what his father left and in, in really sort of breeding the, the next wave of – uh, Russian or Dagestani or, or whatever sort of province. I apologize that I'm not calling the right one. <laughs> I kind of feel like he's going to take over what his father did. I think, yes, he could come back for these uh, maybe huge fights at some point. But honestly, if he gets 30 no, I think that's been the number in his head um, for so long and the number that meant something that his father was talking about. Oh, let's get to this, let's get to this or whatever. And I do believe at some point he will be involved with uh, his country in a bigger role, whether yeah. it be a government position or something, even if it's like a ministry of sports sort of deal or something. Yeah. But I, I, I honestly feel like he could always be like uh, the Rocky we see in movies that comes back when he's way old, but he still somehow comes back and starts as the young guy. Yes, he could do that. But honestly, I think if he gets one more big fight, whether it be a GSP or somebody big, it makes it 30 and 0. I can see him comfortably walking away and shifting into another role. Could he always come back at some point? Sure, of course. Just like a, a good movie, the, the the hero of old can always come back and fight the younger guy and, and overtake him. Yeah, but to kind of help develop the sport. To I help. can see him literally walking away and, and being completely content with his career and uh, just oh. switching. And he wants – I mean, what better honor uh, – to his father then uh, take on that role and become that father figure for all the other guys that's underneath. Almost, that's almost that – I wouldn't even say it's almost. That is even more of an honor than just being a dominant fighter, right? I, I think so completely. I mean, I think if anything, yeah. he probably gauges himself in what his own – as we all probably do, we gauge our self-worth upon our parents, upon the what's been put before us. I think if he would be able to reach that spot – he would be uh, happy and content knowing that that's probably what his father hoped for him to do right. in the future. So yeah, I mean, if he never came back, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be surprised because if he if he ever stepped in that role where he would become this next mentor to the next generation or five generations or however many people are in a generation, whatever, <laughs> he's gonna be five hundred years old and still. Uh, but. Uh, I think that's that's what I envision for Habib is that he will be uh, the next guy like his father being the guy that everybody sort of credits for the next generation and the next generation. So, But I do believe that he will get that 30 no. Somebody's going to trigger it, and I think it, but I think it needs to be a goat fight. And then at that point, unless it's a crazy amount of money – and unless there's a plot twist somewhere where somebody kidnaps his wife, like in a movie, and he has to fight for her honor, <laughs> I don't, I don't envision that we'll see him back. I bet thirty and O uh, will stay until uh, some crazy amount of money needs to happen. Whereas maybe his country's like, they're 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 affecting our country's honor, and he's like, I will stand up and fight for our country. Um, I think he's willing to take on the role of what his father did. I think that's probably what his goal what is. What an honor that would be. Yeah, what that's an honor huge. that would be. That's All right, huge. we talked about Paul Felder versus Javier Dos Anjos. Um, no disrespect to Islam Makachev because Islam Makachev is, you know, kind of like what we were saying earlier, like with Glover versus Jan, you know, Makachev versus Dos Anjos was a, was a great fight. It's just a fight that wasn't moving the needle at all. The needle yeah. is completely moving now that Paul Felder has Dos stepped Anjos in. Was that Dos versus Makachev, or was that Makachev versus Dos Well, Anjos? you make an interesting point there, Kokavi, <laughs> in that RDA was the A side of this matchup until so weird. Paul Felder stepped in. And now the title say Felder versus Dos Anjos? It is funny. In the UFC, by the way, they do the name order based on ranking. So it's not like they – were making a decision to slight the guy, but it is funny, Weren't right? They? Like, Weren't they? You were the A side, <laughs> now you're not the A side anymore. Uh, but listen, I will say, man, as far as like you know, attention and excitement about this card, man. 
Paul Felder stepping in has really changed things. Um, and, and I feel like a lot more people are excited about this right now. And it's cool, man. Paul Felder stepping in on a week's notice, uh, you know, less than a week's notice, I should even say, keeping it as five rounds, not asking for a catchweight fight. Um, and he, he did the virtual media day earlier today, which, of course, we've made it clear we're, neither one of us are really big fans of, but it is what it is. We have to deal with it. Um, but during his virtual media day interview, uh, saying that, um, you know, listen, I mean, he basically made it clear he got more money out of the deal. He got a new contract out of the deal, and good on him to do that. But I like what he said. He's like, look, man, they, they offered me this opportunity, um, and – you know, I knew that if I said let's do three rounds instead of five, or let's do a, let's do you know 165 instead of 155 or whatever, that now I can't come to them and say no, 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 I need this, I need this. So that's good. So he took it because he got an opportunity to cash in on it. But the other thing about it that's interesting is, and that really excites me about this, is it's not like he was just sitting on the couch. The dude has legit yeah. been training. For triathlons. For triathlons. If you watch, if you watch the uh, the documentary that they did on, on the Fight Island Declassified, which I already said I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, I really enjoyed. They showed a little bit of it there, um, and then you know other other people have been talking about it around it. But the dude has literally been training for triathlons, and that's what you know. What is the, I, I guess at this point, you know, the most famous example of that would be the Diaz brothers, right? That we always knew. They're like, hey man, these guys are always in shape. They train for triathlons. They do triathlons. He's literally been training for like high level triathlon. So this fight excites me. And man, for, for RDA, it's I mean, he deserves all the respect in the world too, because RDA was training for a, a completely different opponent, right? I mean, an entirely different opponent. Um I'm excited about this fight, man. I really am. And I believe that that Paul Felder deserves Normally, somebody stepping in on five days' notice, yeah. coming off the couch, who's been talking about retirement, I would say, oh, mm, don't know about that. But, man, I feel like this engaged him mentally. Physically, yeah. he was already engaged. Man, I am I am I am intrigued by this fight. I'm certainly intrigued. I mean, and one thing, it, it's because Felder is just credit to him, man. I mean, one, he's, he's the – a perfect gentleman during fight week, outside of fight week, he's fun to listen to his commentary. But always during That's fight great. week, he's always puts a, a good face forward. He's always willing to talk. He's always willing to do whatever. I felt for him today. I, I, it looked a little, the weight cut looked tough, right? It looked like I mean, Grant. He said he sort of uh, pushed himself a little bit early, but uh, he needed to do it to make sure that he was getting to the point. I mean, heavens, uh, I mean, weigh-ins tomorrow so he's got to be able to be ready but he looked a little bit depleted um so i hope that he's able to sort of recover and the mustache did not look depleted really. though the mustache, no, the mustache, did mustache not. was so strong in fact the mustache probably was even more prominent as his face was sinking in a little bit i think it, i think it was the mustache that was actually talking today and, <laughs> and and paul was just sort of recovering his eyes were like am i here where am i where am i the mustache is like i got this i got this just sit back <laughs> Just hold your head up. I got this, dog. Paul, be quiet. I've got <laughs> this. Paul, quiet. <laughs> That's why there was a slight deepness to the voice. That's what his, his stash sounded like. Um, but you're right. Credit to him. But that Paul, Paul lived up to everything that he has embodied up to this point, that he's ready to fight at a moment's notice, five days' notice, going in there and fighting against RDA is absolutely batshit crazy. I mean, RDA is still – I mean, that's the former champ, you know. I yep. mean, some people might look and say, oh, that's, that's not the RDA that, that used to be RDA or whatever. But it's still – Rafael Dos Anjos is a beast, yep. man. So to want, be willing to deplete your body and do what he's doing. Because he said he normally walked around, what, 70, 80, 90 or something? And then to literally drop down to lightweight – on five days' notice against one of the top-notch guys in the sport, you have balls of steel at the point, let alone just the will to put your body through what needs to happen. Yep. Where he was at, without even getting to the weight today, but looking at him, I question, would I be willing to push myself to that point? And that's why we say over and over again, like, you got to give credit to these fighters and what they put themselves through, the discipline you know, and and uh, you know, here we are being able to be lucky enough to to make a living covering this stuff. But when you see somebody, their their dedication to their sport, to their art, to to do it, 
Paul was the perfect example today watching it. He gave a great press conference that lasted way the F too long. It was Here's a guy cutting weight, and you can see he's struggling, and it went almost 30 minutes. But he didn't at one point complain at all. Nope. Took it all, and in fact apologized at the beginning. He's like, I'm sorry I don't look as good as I normally do. I'm in the middle of a weight cut. It's like, yeah, we get it, brother. <laughs> we get it. But, I mean, this fight is going to be – I mean, it's going to be – what I think we expect, we know what we're going to get from Paul. He's going to keep moving forward. He's going to keep pushing, and he's going to show that chin. But it's just like I just hope that uh, in this part of getting himself the the rush to get himself down to weight doesn't deplete him so bad that he's not able to fully recover. I agree. To give what we expect out of a five round fight. I took I I'll be honest with you on my picks, uh, stat picks. I took Felder as the underdog, and I maybe and listen. I'll be the first to admit, man, I love a good story. At the end of the day, yeah. I'm a writer. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm a writer. I love good stories. And I'm afraid that maybe I'm buying into the story a little bit too much. But when I think about the X's and O's of it, when I think about you know the fight itself, I think about the fact that, again, yes, Paul's coming in on short notice. But he's not beat up from a training camp, yet he's still in phenomenal shape because he's been working on his cardio. And I think if you're going to go five rounds to RDA, your ass better be in shape. Yeah. And he's in phenomenal shape, right? He's not going to come in with the normal, you know, nicks and bruises and bangs that yeah. you would be. I mean, you got to imagine the way you would be pushing yourself in a training camp against a former champ in a main event, a five round fight. You know, you'd be pushing yourself. He didn't have to push his body that way. So I think his body's yeah. going to be in good shape. And then I think about the fact that, yes, you're coming on short notice. But, I mean, and, and granted, RDA clearly has, you know, the striking game in his back pocket. But I got to think his entire camp was wrestling heavy as hell. You know what yeah. I mean? I would, yeah. I, would, I would imagine that it was really based on that. So now he's having to train. He's having to change body type, stance, st- uh, uh, entire style in a week. Um I feel like Felder has a little bit of the element of surprise. So again, I, I may be buying in too much because I love I love stories. But well, I, and you I, love I like Felder too. Things. I do, and I love. I, 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 well, listen, I well, love. I mean, RDA. how can you not like both both them? Right, but I know, I know, Felder's Felder's are huge. How can you not love Felder? Oh, yeah, I mean, the, the way that I mean, he carries himself, and I know we've all. I, I know we've had a few. Frosty beverages off to the side. Yeah, I, at, I definitely at, had more beers with Paul Felder than I had than with RDA. RDA. <laughs> so in that turn, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Rafael. You know, got to go through it. My, you know, drinking buddies stick together. Um, but you're right. I mean, uh, it's 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 tough because you're right. Both guys are, are fun guys to watch. But man, there's something. Uh, Paul is super super fun. But also, I can see where RDA is probably like. I know Paul. Paul's going to walk forward. That's true. There's going to be one thing that's coming from Paul, but you're right. I can see where, even though he has been drilling the the wrestling defense, that that's good for good for RDA. But at this point, he's probably like, well, okay, well, what do I need to prepare for? I need to prepare for a guy that's going to walk through everything that I throw at him, just so he can pound me on my face. Well. So if anything, you know, RDA at this point, he needs to have that cardio because he can be on. He's going to be on his wheels. You know, trying to move because Paul's going to be going forward, but it's just it's tough. I end up going RDA, and the only reason I went I RDA, blame you. Can't blame you. is just for the fact of that it was a short term. It's probably the smart pick. It was a honest, short. Man. It was a short notice. But when it comes to, you know, who I, not that you want to pick one guy, I would love to see, like you said, the story win out in Paul's favor, just because he's he's a great guy, and the fact that he's taken on short notice. I love when these guys step up in in short notice. And are able to to pull it out uh, when most people are counting against him. And I think a lot of people are thinking that this is way too short notice for Paul to, to step in. Um, but you never know. I mean, a fight's a fight. I mean, RDA is as well is not the same RDA that was the champ. This is not the same. Still RDA. dangerous, but not the still same. still dangerous, but not the same. So uh, anything can happen. I mean, anything can happen. Um, I just I just. The five days notice was a bit short for me, and then seeing scary. him today, not that it reaffirmed, but I reaffirmed that it's not as easy as he said it was easy. It's not as easy to weight cut as it is because I mean he was he was certainly wearing it a good bit, but it was. but who knows? Who knows? Co-main event. I do want to point out real quick: uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan versus Chaos Williams should be an absolute banger. Yep. Uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Uh, I'm an Abdul Razak Al Hassan Homer, so I'll just yeah. admit that right now. Obviously, part of the Fortis MMA squad. Um, obviously, what he went through in in the in the build up to his last fight was was unbelievable. I will say he did look to me 
um, lighter. Um, of course, he was closer to weight cut because when we talked to him last time, mm-hmm. um, when we talked to him last time on Fight Island, we got to see him in person, um, but it was Wednesday. Um, so what I don't know is if he was lighter just because it was Thursday today or if he is lighter. You know, he seemed to suggest that he – Realized. I mean, he straight said it. He was like, dude, I just sat around on my couch and got fat. I mean, he admitted, like, t- before his last fight, like, he went through severe depression. I mean, it, I, I think it's well documented what he went through at this time. Uh, accused of, of rape, basically. Yeah. Um, was was found innocent. Um, but just such an emotional thing for him to battle through. Um, you know, he admitted he was depressed. I mean, he's a married man, and so it was, you know, it, it was difficult for him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he thought he might be going to jail. He didn't know. He, he he proclaimed his innocence all along. I mean, what he went through was difficult. There's no way he could have been 100% um, focused in there. And, by the way, fought a pretty damn good dude in the yeah. way. And Munir Laziz is, is a guy that, I, that I'm excited to see more about. Um, but Chaos Williams, another dangerous guy. So, I, I just – I feel like we're going to get a better version of, of Abdul Razak Al-Hassan just based on circumstance, based on what I observed today, even if it was virtually. And, of course, Chaos Williams on the other side is going to be looking to bring it as well. I, I think the co-main event is going to be uh, – I think it should be exciting. It should be a, a lot of fun. I mean, you're right. Al-Hassan is just so much fun watching. And when he's there, completely is is awesome. And this – you know, when I look at Chaos Williams, it's a guy that hasn't been, like, I guess – per se, on my radar because he's right. relatively new yeah, when it comes to the UFC. But everything I've seen, I mean, the dude's an absolute stud. So uh, good on him. And, I mean, especially if they're if they're willing to give him the co-main event, I, mean, I think he's probably willing to, 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 to shoulder that responsibility. I think everybody, when they're, when they're especially when they make it to the main card, shoulder that responsibility and they want to come out banging. But with a guy against, like, uh, Al-Hassan, like, you can't, not throw because it's going to come to you anyways. So I think this this is definitely one of those fights where it's going to be a lot of uh, a little a lot of banging. I mean, when you look through his records, it's stoppage by punches, stoppage by punches. Oh, there's a random few decisions, but yeah, these cats are going to go out there throwing. So uh, it should be a lot of fun. That should be some good violence in that one. <laughs> I dig it, man. Uh, Julian Marquez, of course, is fun to see him back. He's been out for a long time. Your boy Eric Anders is on there. And I'm not trying to disrespect Saperbeck Safarov, by the way. I'm just saying I'm more excited about seeing Marquez back. Uh, Eric Anders uh, versus Antonio Arroyo should be fun. And uh, I love that this this got moved up to to the main card. Kay Hansen versus Corey McKenna. A yeah, couple of fun. Uh, you know early 20-year-olds. It's crazy to see this next generation of – I mean, dude, I'm sorry. I'm 40. How old am I? They're babies. 42. They're kids. They're, they they're are kids. literally kids. It feels like watching them. But they're good on them. I mean, I'm I'm always glad when the UFC still realizes that they should spotlight women's uh, MMA. There's so many good fights. So the fact that they're literally sort of jumping and uh, promoting up some young MMA fighters, some young female ones. But these, I think it's going to be exciting. I think this is one of those fights where, for for some people, they're like, oh, you know, women's MMA just doesn't do it for me. Nah. This is one of those fights that I, I think could tier. change your mind. It's yeah, that next tier. This fight could change your mind. Uh, by the way, speaking of women's MMA, Miranda Granger, CFFC vet. I mean, you, you know if you're coming out of Cage Fury Fighting Championship. That, that, that organization sounds quality familiar. Quality organization. Familiar. Quality organization. You know that's going to be <laughs> top level. Uh, our buddy Lewis Smoke is going to be on there against Jose Quinones. That could be a, a very, very fun fight as well. Uh, Kanika Murata as well um, coming in from Invicta has, has some real skills. So uh, we'll see. And by the way, early fight card on the West Coast. Prelim starting at 1 p.m., main card starting at 4. I ain't hating on that. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a there's a few candidates for the mm, 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 fight of the night, <laughs> so make sure you all stick into the prelims because there's a few candidates on there. I'll let you all guess which one I might be. But. <laughs> so t- <laughs> all right, listen, I want to mention one more thing before That's we jump out of That's what they tune in for. Uh, they want to find out what's the mm, mm, mm. yeah, Chris, fight of the night. <laughs> So uh, all right, listen, uh, by the way, I haven't even given any plugs. I should say, by the way, please, if you could rate us, review us, do that. Go on yeah, iTunes. please go on there. Apple Podcasts. Please I do that. I promise I won't stare in your windows, okay? <laughs> please do that. Uh, if, if, even better if you can go to uh, patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. Then I will stare in your windows. <laughs> You can stare at mine. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Support I'll be sure to leave there. the windows open. <laughs> You don't even have to stare. You can just come on in. Just come on For $3 in. For $3 a month, you can come on in. <laughs> you come right in. 
Uh, so please do that. All right, listen, I want to mention one more thing real quick. I am very, very, very excited about Kayla Harrison fighting for Invicta. Yeah. And not only fighting for Invicta, but going down to 145 pounds because uh, I don't know how much, uh, are, you know, people watch. Was she not at 145? 155. So I don't know how much people watch PFL. Clearly you not that much. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> I just, I just assume because I knew that she talked about 145. I just assumed that she was at the 145. She never fought at 145 she before? Didn't, uh, no, no, because she didn't want to cut weight. I mean, that's why everybody was basically forced to to, to, to go up, to move up. Exactly. So um, I'm I'm excited about this. Um, again, she, she's – Me too. Very, <laughs> you're excited about everything, sir. Uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm excited about this um, because I do believe there is a potential move to the UFC at some point. Oh, it's guaranteed. Um, and her and Amanda Nunes, and I know they both train ATT, but from what I understand, they don't train together. Yep. Um, would be – Amazing! I would yeah. love to see that fight. Um, obviously, Amanda is operating at a higher level right now. Man, she's uh, number one pound for pound in the world. Amanda don't want that smoke. But I'm telling you, two-time Olympic judoka she is legit. monster. I have heard Harrison I, will but will burn through anybody. I'm telling you, point. she is so ridiculous. I, so I've it's heard ridiculous. from people behind the scenes because she has been in Vegas. She has gone through like all the tests and stuff at the PI, yeah. and they say her numbers are off. The yeah. charts, dude. And when it comes to, like, the charts. every interview sh- she does, everything, she when you talk about marketable, let alone being a uh, Olympic champ, but just – she just oh, beams a, energy. Oh. She is so fun to watch her interview. She, everything, she has a great smile. She just blah, 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 and just, like, you amazing love her. Amazing spokesman. Amazing. And then she goes yeah. out there and literally just destroys people. Uh, anybody in her path, and this is – Amanda included anybody, they don't – I mean – She's on another level. I mean, dude, I think I think her and Amanda Nunes is a competitive fight. I really do. Maybe I I'm do. crazy about that. I find I believe I, that's a competitive fight. If Amanda can couldn't can't keep it on the feet, Kayla will beat her. If she gets to I the ground, agree. Kayla will beat her. I agree. So I'm sure. so excited about this. Now I, I want to say here's the, here's the, I I want this to be about Kayla Harrison because I want everybody to know I'm excited about Kayla. I'm excited about her going to 145, and I'm excited about the potential of her going to the UFC. Yeah. But I do want to offer a criticism of the PFL. It was it was a month ago that you prevented Anthony Delija from making his UFC debut. And I understand that that guy is nothing in terms of star power and star value, but they kept him from making his UFC debut over on Fight Island because they laid contractual obligations and contractual claims. Boo. And, and now they're allowing other people, and it's not just Kayla, it's actually quite a few that are signing contracts. And, and hey, let me say, while I'm criticizing, let me also say good on the PFL. These fighters have not been able to make any money this year. Right. They have not been able to compete. Good on you for allowing them to go somewhere else and compete and make money. But why did you stop him three and a half weeks ago, four weeks ago, yeah. whatever? That, that, Has why he did tried you stop since him? then, or is it did they just have a change of heart and realize that? I, I don't know. They that's why I don't know. I, maybe, maybe it was that that made them realize. Hopefully, it was the winds. Of, maybe it was that incident that made them realize. Oh yeah, we we're kind of being jackasses. Yeah, we're kind of being the dicks about that. But they need, and if so, then they need to make it up to Anthony Elijah because they cost him a a, a, yeah. a payday. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I don't know. I just. I, I want to give I, – yeah. I just – to me, Especially that, that thing never set right with me. Yeah. And, and now as excited I am about seeing Kayla, it just makes this thing – if you're if you're enforcing the contract of a guy that most people don't know, but you're allowing the girl that you paid a million dollars to to go somewhere else right now, like, yeah. come on, man. That's they got they got to at least make it right. If they have it within their means, they should make it right, you know, yes. and, and – uh, Allow him to do whatever, but maybe even give him a here. Here you go, bonus. I think they unless should. they unless they are that hurting that they can't physically or financially do it. As far as I'm concerned, they need to pay Anthony Delaja what he would have won, which I'm assuming is twelve yeah. and twelve. I'm assuming they it was just twelve and twelve. Yeah, the fact that pay they try that to stop twenty four thousand dollars. Any organization that stops any fighter from going to the UFC when they can't offer them fights. Is just really just shitty. I don't like it. I mean, that's the same way. I mean, I guess people could say the same thing if Dan is like, I don't want to give Anderson another fight, but I'm not going to let him maybe fight somewhere else. If you're not going to let him go, I mean, if you're not going to give him something, just let him you go. You have to. Just let him go. Yeah. But to. in this case, especially if somebody's like, oh, hey, you get a chance to have one of your fighters go to a bigger organization and make more money, 
I mean, there's, and you know that, uh, I mean, if the PFL is going to come back and they're going to do something good on them, they could always point to the guys that went elsewhere and say, That's right. look where our fighters That's go, right. look where our fighters go. But how dare you stop them from making a living if you can't help provide them with a living? And I get it, at. man. This is a unique year and unique circumstances, but I yeah. agree. I hated the decision at the time. And then when I now see that they're allowing people to go, I wonder. And maybe it was. Maybe they realized their error of their ways. And if that's yep. what it was, then, then kudos. They realized we messed up. But now, they should still fix that. Fix it. Exactly yep. right. If, if, you, if you're changing course now, fix that situation. That's what yep. you need to do. So uh, yep. rant over. I, 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 I like the PFL. I like the people at the PFL, of course, man. good people. I'm not trying to dis- – I just did not like that decision. And maybe they will. And maybe I, they've already done it. Maybe they've already made it right. And I hope they will. All right, listen. Uh, I will be on site this weekend, UFC Fight Night 182, so I'll bring full coverage from there. I'll definitely have an and a half extra mm-hmm. afterwards if you want to head on over to patreon.com. slash I'll be Show. listening. You'll be, you'll be sitting at home, but you'll be helping. Helping out, <laughs> we do appreciate it. Always, always appreciate that. And then next week we'll flip it around a little bit because I'm actually going to go do uh, commentary at Cage Fury Fighting Championships. So oh, I'll look at you just week. moonlighting around, just oh, going away, whatever. No quality <laughs> organization, and uh, you'll be handling everything on site. I will be there uh, for USC 255 uh, as far as the fight night. I will be there. I'll miss the weigh-ins uh, because I'll be flying back that day, but I'll be there on oh. fight night. Well, that's all that matters. That's right. So we'll have you covered. That's all that matters. We got you, baby. In the meantime, all that's still coming. I'll just say, thank you for listening. <laughs>